there is just something really wonderful happening、uh, that will give many new possibilities. A new form of artificial intelligence,、um, which many people are now calling generative AI. People think of GPT-4 as a computer that can have perfect memory recall, like most computers do. But in fact, GPT-4 is not like that. It's more of a reasoning engine that thinks very much like a human being. And this is something that we'll come back to because it has tremendous implications for the application in healthcare. The first idea was, well, can we ask this system to take A medical licensing exam. One thing that amazed us is that 90% of the time, GPT-4 gets the correct answer. What is even more amazing is that GPT-4 can give reasons for giving its answer. But it's now not just medical knowledge. There seems to be an ability in GPT-4 to understand the state of mind of people. That's something called theory of mind. Recently, out of UC San Diego Medicine and Johns Hopkins Medicine, they did a study on how well GPT-4 answers questions from patients, and they compared this to human doctors and found that GPT-4 answers just as correctly as human doctors, but is almost ten times more empathetic. Now, all of that sounds wonderful, and it is, but it's not all so easy. There are many, many challenges, many problems to overcome. There's a problem of something called hallucinations. This Propensity of large language models like GPT-4 to just、uh, make stuff up. There's questions about biases, about privacy,、uh, mathematical errors,、uh, unclear regulations. And so, my recommendation to doctors today that, and nurses is to do your own work. If you are a doctor, make your own diagnosis, but then feel free to ask GPT-4 for a second opinion. To check your work and see if there's anything else that you've missed, anything else that you should consider. If you are a nurse and you've made some calculation on drip rates for IV, do the calculation yourself, but then show your calculation to GPT-4 and ask GPT-4 to check your work. And by doing this,、uh, you not only improve yourself, but you can have a chance to reduce medical errors. And、uh, roughly speaking, it comes down to the recommendation that the human should always be in the loop. That ultimately humans are responsible、uh, for decisions in diagnosis, in treatment,、uh, even in the paperwork.、Um, and so、um, we recommend in the book, in the current state of technology, that it's a good idea to use AI to help you, but the human should always verify the results of AI.、Uh, I think the best that we can do now is to really try to understand、uh, and educate people. That this is something new.、Uh, there's a, there, people are misled into thinking that this is a computer that does perfect calculation and develops perfect answers. It's not like that. It's more like、uh, a professor at、uh, the Wharton School at UPenn,、uh, Ethan Mollick. He described GPT-4 as more like an intern,、uh, and it's your personal intern, and you have to treat the answers. That GPT-4 gives you in the same way that you would treat the answers that your intern would give you, and so there's a sophistication and a thoughtfulness in order to get good work out of this kind of system. And so,、uh, exactly, you know, how do we educate people、uh, to think in that, those terms? And then, you know, what is the right framework for regulating uh, such uh, a tool?、Uh, is Is just really、uh, such important work. The more people、uh, that are thinking about this, the, the better.